Valve just released the Steam Deck OLED, which is a magnificent portable handheld gaming device, but it's not without its flaws. Today, we're gonna talk about everything that's wrong with the new Steam Deck OLED. Real quick before we get started, I just wanna say this is not a hate piece on the Steam Deck. I happen to love mine and I have no intention of returning it. I've had many wonderful hours playing with it and many to come, but I did wanna highlight that there are a lot of concerns about things that people might be curious about that might influence their purchasing decision. And so I just wanna talk about uh, what my experience has been and what I've seen with my deck. So let's go through this list. So if you look on Reddit, there's a mega thread right now of everything that's wrong with the Steam Deck OLED problems that people are having. Um, I'm having some of them too. None of them have been great enough for me to want to return my Steam Deck, but I did want to highlight on a couple because it might make a difference for you. Okay, so the first problem that I see people talking about is dead pixels. So we can actually test this real quick. We'll go to the desktop mode and we'll just visit a website that lets you test pixels. God, I love how easy it is to do this. All right, so I have a dead pixel check here and maybe you're not gonna be able to appreciate this through a YouTube video, but I've already done this. I don't have any dead pixels on my screen. This is black, before it was white. Here's red, here's green, and here's blue. Um, I'm not having any dead pixels, but that isn't to say that people aren't having it. But there are two panels out there. There's BOE and Samsung. Uh, they're very similar, but it seems that people who got a BOE panel have a much higher chance of having a dead pixel. Those are on the limited edition ones. It seems most people who got a 512 pretty much were guaranteed a Samsung panel. And it seems like almost no one has had a dead pixel on it. Um, it's important to note too that dead pixels are pretty common with screens. Um, and a lot of times they'll get unstuck just from regular use. Uh, but that being said, one or two dead pixels, we kind of consider acceptable. Uh, any more than that kind of a problem, each manufacturer is gonna have a different uh, setup on that. But for me, I was very lucky, I don't have any. If I did, it might bother me enough to return it, but I would probably try to unfix it, or sorry, unstuck it first using a couple different tests that are available online. Okay, uh, people have talked about that the sticks sometimes make a sticky noise when moving. I feel like Maybe there's just, oh, it's, I can't even, honestly, it's so hard to even pick up. I might have one, but honestly, uh, I'm not having the problem. If you are having problems with the joysticks, you probably should RMA it because it's kind of like one of the main things that you use with this deck. So yeah, in that case, probably would return it, but I haven't had the problem. Uh, one or both triggers sticking or rubbing when moving. This one I've read actually a lot of problems with. I don't have any problems with my triggers. They are, they are just glorious. They're really nice, actually. Um, they've been great. Same with the back buttons. Might have been good. They're kind of stiff, kind of hard to push. I, honestly, I don't use them, so I don't care. But yeah. Okay, this is a big one. The A, B, X, and Y buttons making rattling sounds. This one I can confirm I have. I don't know if you can really pick this up on uh, my microphone because I'm using a lav mic, but it's very subtle, very light. It's only when I lightly touch them. And sometimes, yes, if I'm really mashing the button, I can hear it. The thing is, a lot of controllers have this problem. I actually have an Xbox 360 remote here that does not. These remotes are, I would consider, like the pinnacle of like a modern remote. Um, there's no rattling at all. They're really fantastic. A lot of remotes have this. I, I'm, I don't know, I'm not too hung up on it. It would be nice if they didn't rattle, but I remember as a kid, N64 remotes, Dreamcast remotes, they all had rattles in them for the buttons. They weren't perfect. Yes, these could totally be better. And like the B button seems to be better than the rest, maybe because it's on the edge here and these are flat. Um, maybe an aftermarket button set might fix it. Uh, but for me, it's not enough that I would consider it a game changer uh, if I want to return it or not. Some people say that the B button sticks for them. I have not actually had this problem. My B button works great. Um, but if it was sticking, I would uh, definitely consider RMAing it. Apparently, some people are saying that uh, you can try to sand down the internal part. I don't do it. It's, it's too much work. I would, just, I would just send it back. Now, some people say that their D-pad is hard to press. Mine is like, yeah, it's a little hard to press, but it's, it's not like difficult. I would use this in a game for sure. Um, and also some people say that it clicks. I guess I have sort of a click there, but it's really more of a tap than a click. It's not enough to bother me, and it's really more accentuated by the fact that it's on the desk here and this is reverberating noise. So yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, one of my trackpads or both have very weak haptic feedback. Now I got lucky here. Mine have 
pretty good feedback on both. They're, they actually don't work in the Steam menu here, I guess. But yeah, they, they, they're fine to me. I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Let's see. My RB and LB buttons, the bumpers, those are the, I think the ones on the front here, these guys. Um, both of them, or one of them, are pressed, make an exaggerated clicky sound. No, they sound good. Uh, there's actually one more problem. Uh, and this one you may have noticed throughout the video. The Steam Deck is not laying perfectly flat on my desk. That one actually bothered me more than any of the other ones. That being said, I was able to pick it up and kind of wrench it to make it better. And then I could also make it worse in the other direction. That to me is just like, unfortunately you have to prioritize things in manufacturing. Having a super rigid case means spending more on plastic and more on the design of it and everything else. Um, and it might mean that it's also harder to service yourself. Uh, basically, I think that it's a trade-off that they made. It's not a big deal. Most people are not using their deck on a flat desk like this. They are holding their deck when they're using it, so you're not gonna notice. Um, or they're gonna have it in a dock. So again, you're not gonna notice. That's like a very small thing. And I think a lot of these problems in general, I think are something they have to think about. At this price point, this is $550, uh, you know, plus tax and shipping. Or sorry, shipping's built in. But anyhow, at $550, this is a miraculous machine. It is truly amazing how much they pack into this package with the screen, the speakers are pretty nice, the Steam OS that they developed for it, uh, the joysticks are really nice for the most part. Like, this is a really fantastic little machine and the, the new fan is so quiet too in this one as well. I can deal with the fact that these buttons aren't perfect. It's, you know, it's not the end of the world. The joysticks, my, my left one is stickier than the right one. I don't know why. If it eventually just bugs me too much, I might just like replace the joystick myself on the right side. But for the time being, it doesn't really matter. Like this is a really great piece of hardware for what it is and what it delivers in terms of the customer experience. The OS is amazing. The screen is amazing. And almost all the games that you would want to play on here work with low specs and lower resolution. FSR, if you, so FRS, no, FSR. FSR, if, uh, if you want to uh, really get more out of it. 90 hertz is like a great sweet spot, I think, for feeling really fluid and at the same time not eating too much battery and power. This is an awesome device. And all these problems that people are having, most of them can be fixed with either an RMA or they're just something that are not such a big deal that you can live with. And I think that that right there is really what you just have to decide. If you want something that is super high end and that is super polished, maybe you want to consider like an, uh, an Ioneo or something like that. I don't want to spend that much money on something like this. This to me is amazing value uh, for the amount of money that I'm putting into it and the amount of use that I'm getting out of it. And so I'm willing to put aside most of the other problems that I'm seeing. And I don't think that it's a big deal. But everything has flaws and I happen to adore this deck for everything that it has going right with it. I think that it's a really wonderful unit and I don't think you should let these flaws be deal breakers for you, but if some of them are, you can always RMA it. Valve has some really wonderful customer service and I know that a lot of people are very happy with their decks even when they've had to have them replaced. We're no longer living in the time of the deck one where people sometimes were RMAing it and not getting a replacement for months or a year at a time. So it's a really safe thing to do. This, this is a polished product. It's awesome. You should buy one. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, remember to subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next one.